Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Project Automata, a tycoon game currently being developed by Dapper Penguin Studios. Uh, we are having a look today at the alpha gameplay, so uh, there may be a few bugs and some uh, graphical glitches as we move forward. Um, but we're going to check it out anyways because it's a pretty neat title and I think you guys are going to really like it. Uh, very similar to uh, Transport Tycoon or OpenTD for anybody that might be familiar with that game. Uh, it was a very cool game developed I believe in the 90s. Uh, it is actually still pretty popular and has a very large cult following today. Uh, it's a very, very complex, in-depth tycoon game and uh, Project Automata here takes a lot of inspiration from that and as we get into the the game and actually check it out you'll get a chance to see that so there isn't a whole lot of content just yet uh, added to the game eventually there's going to be things such as scenarios to accomplish uh, however right now it's basically just kind of like a sandbox world where you can mess around with the mechanics and see what they're all about so that is what we're going to be doing for about uh, three episodes or so uh, we'll be messing around with the mechanics and, and checking it all out and then uh, we'll just close it off so no real goal yet until the actual full game releases and we can dive into the scenarios and start accomplishing some of those. Now, I do also want to let you guys know before I begin that there is going to be a Kickstarter for the game on October 1st. So, if you're watching the series and you like what you see, there'll be a link down below. You can go down there and click on it. Uh, the link won't be there until the Kickstarter actually starts up on October 1st. But on October 1st, you can go down to the description Find the link to the Kickstarter, click on it, and uh, if you want to support the game, support the developers, get this game rolling, uh, feel free to do that. I know I certainly will. So, uh, I already did the tutorial, and it just basically teaches you uh, some of the neat things about the game. I'll go through what they are, so I'm not going to do the tutorial for you guys. I'm just going to click on New Game, and we're going to jump into a uh, map. Now, I guess it's just going to be called New Game. Uh, you can put a map seed here, but we're not going to worry about that. We're going to go with a big map because why not? I don't think I can mess with anything else here. Can't change the name or anything. Okay, so we're just going to start it. And it does take a second to load. I do know that. Especially the big map. But yeah, this game's definitely really neat. Um, like I said, there's not a whole lot to it just yet. But I, if this comes out being anything like what I think it is, which would be like a really updated graphical enhanced version of uh, OpenTD, it's going to be a really good game. I mean, it's already extremely neat with how it all works. Um, definitely uh, quite interesting. But here we are. So we find ourselves in the world. Now, every world is randomly generated. So every single map you load uh, will not be the same as uh, anybody else's map unless you use their seed. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And taking a look here, we can actually see we've got some resources scattered about. So that's what you see kind of down here. We've got some coal ore, uh, some iron ore. What do we got here? Some gas. Uh, all right. Some oil. We've got lots of trees, which is, which will be, uh, lumber. And uh, I think that's it for now. I don't think there's really very many other resources or at least raw resources on the map uh, but later in the future we'll be able to uh, they're going to add lots of different resources and such so that'll be pretty good we can see a couple different factories kind of scattered about here and then several different towns and uh these towns actually are going to need certain resources so we can kind of go through and take a look and see what those resources are uh, but before i do that i'll just go over some of the stuff that you see on the screen so for anybody that might not be familiar with what they're seeing uh, you'll have a good idea. So we've got the build down here uh, that we're playing with for anybody that might be interested. But down the bottom right hand corner, you can see the pause here and then different motions of fast forwarding um, and the date. Uh, all of our all the things we can build are going to be found down here in these options. And then over here is kind of our monthly income, monthly expenses. So we can keep track on whether or not we're making money and then our actual current balance. So everything still you're seeing is... Uh, or everything you're seeing right now in the game is definitely uh, not the final version. Uh, anything can change at any point in time. So do uh, take everything I tell you with a grain of salt. Because uh, later on down the road, some of these things may not be accurate. So where do we want to actually start kind of improving? Um, Berlin, Madrid, Copenhagen. Stutt I can't pronounce that one. Stuttgart, Stuttgart, 
in London. Why don't we start up here in Berlin? That sounds good. What do we got here? We got a lumber yard, some other stuff. So we can actually click on these and there's all sorts of information we can see. So uh, how many harvesters are placed? Harvesters are what are actually uh, collect the lumber. We can see uh, how much production in a month. Total lifetime production, how much it costs to actually rent this building, $6,000 a month, and the actual value if I wanted to buy the building. So that's what's something that's really interesting is you can actually choose to rent out a building or buy a building. Obviously, buying it, you don't got to pay $6,000 a month to rent it, but maybe if you don't have the cash on hand with you, it's better to just rent it. So there's all sorts of uh, interesting circumstances. Now, if we take a look at Berlin, we can actually see some of its wanted goods and its production surplus. Now, basically what you want to do is you want to try to build factories and build uh, and rent factories and whatnot to uh, ship goods to the cities, which will then usually manufacture goods or will uh, disperse them out into their citizens. Um, and then you can also ship goods between cities. You can uh, ship goods to factories that manufacture them into more refined goods such as lumber into furniture and then ship that good to cities. There's a lot of stuff you could do. It. It's really just about building production lines and, and, and uh, you know, building production chains and such. So if we actually take a look at Berlin, we can see uh, they urgently want meat. We've got glassware, oil, and dough. Their production surplus, they're making, they've got fab, uh, surplus of fabric, chemicals, coal, cotton, and barley, whiskey. Uh, interesting enough. So if we take a look at Madrid, what do we got here? They want coal, beer, and handbags. They have steel, wheat, and hops. Coal, I think one of their production surpluses was coal. So interestingly enough, we could actually click on destination coal. We could select a destination and we could actually send that to Madrid. So already we could start making some early cash uh, just by trading uh, coal with Madrid. So as you can see, the trucks are now already on their way leaving to bring coal to Madrid. Uh, that would be pretty useful because we can actually start uh, building up Madrid there. Uh, with coal and supply trucks moving down. So what else do we need? We're going to kind of work between Berlin and Madrid. Maybe just work on uh, building around these cities for now. So taking a look at Berlin, what do we, what do, what do they want? They urge, urgently want oil. And I think Madrid wanted oil too. No, it was just coal and then beer. They have lots of wheat and hops, but they can't produce their own beer, huh? So we could potentially get um some goods from them maybe i'm not sure how that fully works do we have oil in the area we've got a small bit of oil it's not really a lot berlin needs the oil they've got a larger setup here so why don't we go into gatherers and get some oil so we can get an oil drill which costs how much One hundred and fifty thousand. that's all right though that's what's nice about having 25 million. You can see right there, by the way, if you look at production sales, just uh, income from selling products. So just between moving coal from Berlin to Madrid, we're actually making money, which seems um, pretty useful um, when you think about it because it does. Now, let me better explain this because some of you guys might be confused on why I'm making money off of that because it's Berlin trading to Madrid, right? Well, not necessarily. Basically, what's happening is I'm actually doing trading. So... If you take a look, production surplus, Berlin is selling coal for $3,500. I don't know how much coal that actually is. It could be a ton. I don't know, but they're selling coal for $3,500. Madrid is buying coal. They're buying it, well, for $3,500 now. I think it was a lot higher. So basically what I was doing was I was buying it from Berlin and then selling it in Madrid and then making a profit off of it. You can see product purchased was 10000 but product sales was 15000 Now, I don't know if I'm going to make money off of it now because they're they're paying 3500 for it. And Berlin is selling it for 3500 so we'll just have to wait and see if we make money off of that. But that's basically how that works. You can actually trade goods between cities based off of just who needs what. So you can see they want wheat. And they're buying it for 9000 and we know Madrid is selling wheat for 9000 So I'm not really sure how that fully works. But we're going to go ahead and select wheat and send that off to Copenhagen like that. So that should hopefully boost it. Let's say we're actually going to – these trucks are going to hit right now. That might just be a small glitch or something having it be the same amount. But we'll have – these trucks are going to hit right now. We can see if we made profit. And we did. So already seeing there exactly what I said earlier. We bought it for about 10000 It was 10500 total. 
and we sold it for 15750 Now, once these trucks actually reach Copenhagen, we'll actually be able to see what the profit is that we're going to be getting on wheat. Uh, it could be fairly good profit. Yeah, it seemed like it was about to hit 50. It was going to be about 60,000. So total, uh, we've made $26,000 in the last 30 days. So, I mean, making money right now in this game, obviously, is pretty easy. Now, um, like I said, there's going to be scenarios in the future that are going to be more difficult scenarios. And uh, the game's going to become more in-depth and more complex as time goes on. But uh, that's just how it goes. So oil, oil is something we need. So we wanted to build an oil drill. Uh, does anybody else need oil? Because I'll set it up kind of in a way that we'll maybe see, we'll see oil. Doesn't look like it. So it's really just Berlin that needs it. So I could really set it up up there. But I'll set it up over here because maybe I could build some factories off of it as well. So we'll go oil drill. We could press R to rotate the building. We'll just rotate it like that because that makes sense. And that'll go ahead and get constructed. And whilst that's building, I'm just going to build a road right over. Now you can see spending money can get pretty high. So trading resources, just like an open TD, sometimes uh, certain things like uh, don't make you a whole lot of money, but they do help to somewhat balance out costs. Like an open TD, it was not really very efficient to run like a transportation system with buses it didn't make a whole lot of money uh but it um would make enough money that it could make a difference uh for paying off certain loans and such now our oil drill you can see here we had a little thing pop up so building problem it's missing harvesters so not a big deal what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and build some harvesters which is what actually harvests the oil from the uh, oil resources around and brings it to the oil drill so i think it only makes sense that we probably set up a harvester we really should just probably do it like that and then probably just one more like that um, that makes sense to me and then we could just go like this there we go. So our trucks will go ahead and deliver that raw oil straight to our oil drill, which we then can set up to drill, uh, send the oil to Berlin, who is buying it for a pretty nice price right now. So we'll click on destination. You can see that we can choose three different destinations we want to send this to. It could be a city, could be a factory, could be anything really. But uh, we're going to go ahead and send it to Berlin because Berlin is willing to pay us a pretty good price for it. So these trucks will move the oil to the oil drill and the trucks in the oil drill will deliver the oil, a lot of it that is, uh, to Berlin. You can see here that we're doing fantastic, making lots of negative money, which is what I like to see early game. Uh, but that's okay because we are getting uh, up there on some of these. Now handbags is pretty high. Beer is extremely high. I would love to be able to make some beer. Uh, what actually makes beer? That is the question. Brewery would do it. 650000 Well, that makes sense why beer is so expensive. Uh, glassware would might not be a bad one either. Um, glassware and smelter. Wow, interesting. Why don't we get some beer going, right? That kind of makes sense, maybe. What do we got here, though? An iron mine? Well, I don't think anybody really needed iron. And there's a gas pump here we could rent if anybody needs gas, but I don't know if anybody needed gas. Um, they needed oil, but they didn't need gas. Well, we could just rent the gas mine and send the gas somewhere else that might need it. They need glass, not gas. Beer, port. Okay, nobody needs gas. So unless I actually set up to build a good with glass, or I'm sorry, with gas, uh, nobody needs it. So they want wheat, Madrid wants beer, why don't we set up a brewery and see how that goes, just mess around with it a little bit. We can set it up right in between these two cities. This will give us a chance to kind of mess around with uh, sending our own resources to our own sites. 
Um, coal. We've got coal in the area as well. They've got plenty of it, but we know Madrid wants it. So we could set up a coal mine since they've got a ton of it right in the area. We could set up a coal mine and then... Uh, do lots of mining for coal. Trying to figure up a good way to set this up so that I can get the coal actually in here. Actually, if I set it up like this, I can get both. Oh, that's perfect, actually. Because then I can get both resources. And we actually got to build some harvesters. So we're going to have lots of coal harvesters. We're going to have a big coal industry going. Now, what's really cool about any game like this, like OpenTD or anything, is that one of the coolest parts I think about these games is it, you can either focus on building a, um, you know, an industry that doesn't really specialize in anything in particular, uh, or you can, uh, just absolutely dominate one particular industry. When I played Open TD, I always used to try to dominate one particular thing and then eventually I might drift off into other things, but I just love just dominating one thing. Um, it was a lot of fun just being like, okay, I'm going to set up an industry that's just going to perfect, um, moving around people. And you would just set up trains and planes and buses and your goal would be to just move people. And so I feel like, uh, you know, project, uh, Automata could have the same exact way, whereas, you know, I could just come into the game and be like, all right, I'm just going to dominate the coal industry. That's all I'm going to do. Just move coal everywhere. And then you just, you move coal and then you, you know, you start, and then slowly you start drifting into, you know, monopolizing it and drifting it in, into other industries and being like, all right, I've got the coal. Now I'm going to use the coal to make another product. And then you start dominating that product and you just slowly expand. It's a lot of fun to do it like that. Speaking of that, we've got the brewery. So we want to choose a recipe. We want to brew a beer. Now what's really cool about this is we pick our recipe. We know we want to brew beer. Now it's going to tell us what we need. We need one bottle, two hops, and then we're going to, that goes into here and creates one beer. One bottle and two hops, huh? Well, we know we can get hops from them. I wonder if that actually works. Let's find out. Hops. Brewery. So why don't we send hops from them and see how that goes. And then we need bottles. I don't think anybody nearby has bottles. So I might have to make my own. They have tin cans. But nobody actually has bottles. So that's where it gets interesting. We've got to figure out what we need to make bottles. I'm assuming that's going to be under glassworks. So I say we build glassworks right in the area. And uh, find out what it's actually going to take to make bottles. All right. And so that is where we stand right now for this episode. Uh, since we are uh, at the end of it. Uh, pretty awesome so far. Yeah, I really like it. Yeah, you know, there's little things here and there that, that could use some work, such as, you know, vehicles clipping through each other, vehicles clipping through buildings. But this is early alpha gameplay. I say for early alpha, this game is going to be it's got a lot going for it. I mean, this is definitely going to be a fantastic uh, uh, spiritual successor to uh, a game like Transport Tycoon. So I'm really, really excited uh, to see where this game evolves uh, as time moves forward. Uh, however, I'll be doing about two more episodes showing off just a little bit more of the features before we kind of cut this off. And then the next time you probably see this game will be when a lot more features have been added and uh, hopefully by then we'll be knocking out some scenarios, some really difficult scenarios. I'm actually looking forward to playing this game and trying to uh, trying to beat some of the more tougher scenarios. So that'll be uh, what you guys have to look forward to in the future. But that is it guys, Project Automata. Thank you for joining me. I do hope you guys enjoyed this first episode and I look forward to seeing you next time.